please, 10 minutes to curtain. It is literally 10 minutes to curtain, and I'm your host, Charlie Miller. I'm in the stage theater where a matinee performance of Richard III is about to begin. So, on with the show. Now is the winter of our discontent. May glorious summer by this sun of York. Well, Richard III is a big, wonderful play, and there's a lot of things in it. And Richard, to me, seems to be sort of the embodiment of war and misogyny and evil. And he's the last remaining uh, antagonist in the Wars of the Roses, the last one who's um, sort of trying to force his will upon the kingdom. And he does it through the most devious ways, and he has the most people murdered. In our production, no one gets off stage alive. Uh, last time we counted, I think we killed 17 people in this production, um, and in about as many different ways as we could come up with. One of the reasons I wanted to put more of the violence on stage than Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare's stage directions indicate uh, was because I wanted to see the consequences of Richard's actions physicalized in front of us. I went through the play, thought about all the places where I thought we might want violence and sent a list to Jeff and I sent him a sort of ba broad idea of where they see the violence, what story they want the violence to tell, um, what are the, I want the audience's response to the violence to be. And based off of a conversation with them and my experience with the play, I then start to sketch up ideas of how we're going to put it together. Now I have the actors on hand, and they'll have ideas too. So we get in the room, we get some rehearsal weapons together, and we start to kind of put together these pieces. And once we do a light sketch and the director likes it, then we do additional rehearsals and get the things up to speed and tweak them and adjust them. So what we start with isn't always what we end with, although the same people tend to die. Place my hand into the table, stab him in the neck. Yeah? Like so. Jesse Berger, the director, and Andrew Long, who's playing Richard, felt very strongly that Richard's weaknesses are also his strengths. That this was a person who had used his handicaps and his deformity, as they're called in the play, his deformities to his advantage in warfare. So Richard frequently throughout this fight, boom, bang, uses his hump as a weapon to knock people out of the way. In the case of this show, since the hump is made of dense foam, he's able to just give um, our Richmond, boom, a pretty good thump with his back. He also, later in the play, uses his leg brace as a shield of his own. So as he does his first move, foom, bing, picks it up to defend himself, allowing him to use his body as his own defense. He's really quite powerful with it, and, and it surprises his opponents. Ah, not to heaven, in hand, in hand, to hand! Another less gruesome play running right now is Kuzi Cram's world premiere production of Dusty and the Big Bad World. If you haven't seen the Dusty website yet, make sure you check it out. Anyway, I heard about some fun that the ladies of the cast were having backstage, so I asked 11-year-old star Chloe Nosan to tell us all about it. Here is Dusty Dressing Room Decoration. Hello, I'm Chloe Nosan and I play Lizzie Goldberg-Jones in Dusty and the Big Bad World. And while all the women are not on stage, we hang out in our dressing room and decorate our dressing room. We do lots of arts and crafts. We decided to decorate it with a theme, and the theme is people who are mentioned in the play but are not actually in it. So on the door here, we have the cartoon characters who are mentioned in the play but not in it, Kermit, SpongeBob, and Snoopy. And come on in. This wall is Marianne's journey. Marianne is the Secretary of Education in the show. She goes from Charleston to Atlanta to Savannah to DC, and then it splits to either heaven or hell. In Savannah and DC, we have her daughter, Susanna, and Frank, her husband. Up in heaven, we have Itsy Bitsy Jesus, Cher, Susanna, and the Virgin Mary stepping on a snake. And here in hell, we have the cute little dusty dust ball. Over here, we have kids who live in the middle of fields and trees, mentioned in the show. And then, last but not least, Sue Beavers, the girl who smiles and winces at the same time and smells like kittens. 
thank you for watching, and I gotta get back to work now. So bye. We'll make it it's dusty. dusty. Dusty and the Big Bad World is directed by Kent Thompson, who has been very busy recently. In addition to overseeing all productions as artistic director and directing his own show, Kent has been working on selecting the plays for next season. I checked in with him to hear how it was going. Here is Selecting a Season with Kent Thompson. Welcome to my office. What I'm doing right now is trying to pick the 2009-2010 season. That's a long process because there's so many factors to consider. To get there though, we read a lot of material. We know that we're going to do like a 10 or 11 or 12 play season, but what we start with always is what are we going to do at the holiday? A Christmas Carol, that's our usual answer, and that'll be our answer for 2009-2010. The next part of the process is in a way kind of a formula that I have in my head which changes almost daily. I'm committed to a variety of kind of voices and stories and cultures. I want to do a Latino play, I want to do an African American play, I want to do a classic, often a Shakespeare but not necessarily. I want to do plays by women, that may take one or two. Of course they're not all mutually exclusive. And the other thing I want to do usually is we tend to end our season with some kind of musical or musical review. We know we want to do at least two world premieres, maybe three, maybe more if we could do it. So you can see that that's a lot of different kinds of plays we're doing. At the same time, I want to keep our resident acting company employed for a season. And then at the same time, I got to be worried about the budget. So it's a very multi-layered process that just goes on for months. We've got to get all that done by the middle of February so that we can pick the new plays that we want to do, insert them into the season, and immediately start moving toward announcing the season, which usually happens toward the end of February. Uh, where we tell our subscribers and we tell the public and then we start selling tickets for next season. About the same time as the season announcement, the Denver Center will be making news with another big initiative. Here to explain is poet David Ivers. Ode to denvercenter.org There is a place where people go to find out all about a show Online, the home you all must see is denvercenter.org. For many years, the site was sweet and every challenge it could meet. But those old times are here no more, for now the site's a dinosaur. It's time for change, we all agreed. A hip new website's what we need. And so the redesign began. Rebuild our image? Yes, we can. A team assembled, the vision clear. A brand new site, a new frontier, new ease and service for our fans. The world of theater in their hands. So brace yourself, it's almost here. The Denver Center's world premiere. The site will soon be all the rage. There will even be a ten minutes to curtain page. This ode must end. Alas, his time. Besides, I'm running out of rhyme. But soon enough, we all will jive when the new website goeth live. A lovely verse, I must confess, but with this poem I digress. So watch next month in new HD at the brand new denvercenter.org. And we'll end with a quick your turn. This month is a freebie, so send in any ideas, suggestions, or questions you might have, and if we turn yours into a segment next month, you'll win free tickets to a show. As usual, you can post a video, post a comment, or send an email to 10minutes at dcpa.org. And that's it for episode five. I'm here at the student night after party for Dusty and the Big Bad World. Yeah! We're having a great time, as you can tell, and you should find out more about Student Nights at our Facebook fan page. And join us the first Tuesday of next month for a new episode of 10 Minutes to Curtain at our new home, denvercenter.org. We'll see you at the theater. <laughs>